Uh, for more on all of this, we're joined this morning by Bob Lutz, former vice chairman, of course, at General Motors, and Rodney Slater, former secretary of transportation and partner at Squire Patton Boggs, who joins us here at Post 9. Gentlemen, good to have you both. Thank you. We just talked to Balmer about some of the challenges in infrastructure. Uh, his point was that actually bridge quality is getting better, not worse. Well, it's, uh, it's getting better, but that doesn't mean that we don't need the uh, kind of investment that's being discussed. Uh, I want to uh, actually commend the uh, president and the Congress for giving this uh, issue the kind of attention it needs. Uh, we've had uh, a number of years where we've gone without investing in our infrastructure as we need to. Uh, having been in the seat that uh, Secretary Chow is in, I know that this was good news for her. Uh, she has a quality team. I think they can help make the case uh, to the American people that this would be a good investment. It undergirds the economy of the country. Would you need to raise the gas tax to do it? Uh, well, you probably do. Uh, the last time the gasoline tax was raised was in 1993. That was during the first year of the Clinton administration. It was first raised for deficit reduction. We need to know that. He made a commitment to balance the budget, get our economic house in order. But then in 1997, during the term that I was secretary, we were able then to take the 4.3 cents that had been raised for gasoline uh, for deficit reduction and move it into the trust fund. We haven't had that kind of infusion since that time. We do need to seriously consider that kind of investment. Mr. Lutz, what did you think of the president's speech last night when it pertains to infrastructure? One and a half trillion dollars, it's a lot of money. Pretty well, light sure. on those details. Is that disappointing to you? No, no, I, not at all. And I think it's, it's vitally necessary. And uh, frankly, uh, the data that I'm seeing is, is at odds with uh, what the former secretary just said because. Um, uh, the average age of the American highway is at record levels. It's at now at 28.7 years. And a crumbling infrastructure like that, whether it's roads, bridges, or whatever, uh, is a drain on the economy. It, it causes problems, it slows transportation, it creates accidents, and it's just something that um, we have to live with. Now, as far as uh, raising the fuel tax in order to pay for it, I always say we've got almost the cheapest gasoline in the uh, in the in yeah. the civilized <laughs> world of uh, a nickel here or a dime there with the with the weekly fluctuations in gasoline prices nobody's even going to notice that. it <laughs> Secretary, yeah. what we haven't heard, at least yes. in the details of the White House proposal, is where technology might play a role in infrastructure. And it seems to me a lot of the cost over time is in maintenance, knowing when to maintain, preventing things from breaking down in the first place. And right now there are a lot of companies in our universe talking about the Internet of Things and how it's going to allow that. Sure. Is it too late to actually include technology in this proposal, um, and how should it happen? Not at all. And uh, first of all, let me... Uh, um, say to Bob Lutz, I don't think that we're disagreeing at all, and I've always um, uh, valued his opinion. And I do think that in the automotive industry, we have really a revolution underway when it comes to combining uh, technology with the, quote, manufacturing of the automobile. We have automobiles today that have the power, the technological power of the space shuttle. And as we look to uh, a few years ahead, when we'll actually have autonomous vehicles that can totally drive and operate themselves, you will then see what was but a dream some years ago. We actually started to uh, invest in this kind of technology during the Clinton administration. We made GPS available for uh, civilian use. Uh, we also uh, started to invest in smart roadways, but that's been 20 years. The day of, of, um, of realization is upon us. And I think that um, uh, any investment in infrastructure should include uh, technology. I also want to say that I think the investment in broadband is very critical here as well. Um, investing in infrastructure is about more than investing in um, concrete asphalt and steel. Uh, it's investing in the hard side and the soft side. But, but and not, you raise a great point. Not nationalizing 5G? Oh, no, <laughs> definitely not. I mean, companies like uh, Verizon, AT&T, and others, they would say, let us play the lead role that we have to play in that regard with government as a partner in that process. Mr. Lutz, what about workers? Uh, we're talking a lot about investing infrastructure. Do we have the labor force that we need to help build $1.5 trillion in infrastructure projects? Do they need to be trained? Do they exist? 
Well, I'm sure that America's construction companies and engineering firms uh, will rise to the challenge. I mean, uh, this 1.5 trillion isn't going to be like a gigantic floodgate that opens up and hit us all at once. It's going to be doled out and uh, projects will be approved. Um, uh, engineering and uh, construction firms will gear up to meet it. But, uh, you know, if, if you ask me, is this good for the American economy? Well, yes, because it's going to create uh, enormous employment in uh, all the fields that have anything to do with infrastructure. If I may just add there, uh, I think that, again, because of this revolution that's occurring, we really have the opportunity to attract more talent uh, to this industry. Much like the space program allowed us to take the case of investing in math and science to schools all across America, building up the pipeline, leading young people to consider engineering, we have the same uh, effort that's underway now when we think about uh, a transportation system that uh, thinks for itself, a transportation system that is safer because uh, of the advancements in technology. So I think this is an exciting time. Now, one other thing we have to consider, though, is that you have a lot of people who may have um, uh, skills challenges who are currently in the industry. We need to have an education and training program that ensures that those individuals are able to do these jobs of the future. Yeah, the president did make some reference. He to did that make last night. make a reference to that as well. Bob, one final note. I mean, I, I'm fascinated by what's going on. I think it's in Arizona uh, with uh, with Waymo and Autonomous. You've you said very provocative things about the future of the car in general. Uh, but can infrastructure? Can a program marry what private industry is already doing on autonomous, at least? Well. Um, the autonomous vehicle using very precise digital mapping down to four inches plus the array of uh, radar and lidar and ultrasound sensors for uh, object or obstacle detection uh, with the combination of the and the, the maps will be actually embedded in the cars so there doesn't need to be anything external what will need to be done is that traffic signals will have to go from being red, right, red, amber, and green, they'll have to go to something uh, that a signal that the cars can receive. But that's not a big deal. Where infrastructure will come in is when, I would say, 15 to 20 years from now, when everything is fully electric, and we will have we will have to have embedded uh, embedded cables in the freeways in order to recharge the vehicles on the freeway as they're traveling <laughs> at whatever <laughs> speed. But that's, you know, that's a ways out. Don't laugh. That's no. coming coming for sure. No, that's true. That's true. And 5G is going to help us get there, right, Bob? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Bob, Mr. Secretary, it's great having you. Thanks Thank so you. much. Uh, good pleasure. discussion, Bob Thank Lutz you. and Roddy Slip. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.